Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today is probably the most exciting day of 2023 so far. You know that Kevin has been waiting for a long time over the winter <laughs> uh, to plant tomato plants, even though he cheated and started a couple. Uh, but today is the day where we are going to plant all of our tomato plants in the greenhouse. We may plant a few other things. We'll have to see how the day goes. But for sure, we're going to have all of the tomatoes planted in the greenhouse. So for those of you who may be new to the channel, our greenhouse is 20 feet wide by 60 feet long. It's from Grower Solutions. You can look them up at growersolutions.com. We absolutely love this greenhouse. In fact, last year, the plants inside of our greenhouse outperformed the plants outside in our main garden by so much that this year, we're making our garden that's outside only half of its normal size, and we're growing half of our summer crops here in the greenhouse instead. Now, we have already planted some cool weather plants, uh, some cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, some onions and lettuce in the greenhouse. Now, this greenhouse is unheated. So growing right now, there is a risk of frost. So we have to grow things that will grow in the cool weather. We planted those a few weeks ago. But now that the nights are warming up a little bit, right. uh, there is really no chance of freezing, or at least we're still crossing our fingers and praying that there won't be any hard frosts. Now is the time that we can start planting our tomatoes. Right. Now it's too uh, risky to plant outside in the ground. We won't be planting in the ground until probably the middle of May. Mid May, yeah. But to get a jump start, oh my gosh, that's like six weeks ahead of time. Right. We're super excited to have the greenhouse so that we can get a jump start on summer plants. Last year we were starting to harvest tomatoes in the greenhouse just around the same time that we were planting tomatoes out in the ground. So that is exciting. Any chance that I have to extend tomato season, I will take. And actually, because of the protection in here, uh, you know, a little bit overnight, we were able to extend the back half or the back part of the growing season and have tomatoes almost until the end of October, I right. think. Right, yeah. So you guys, we've got a lot of planting to do in here today. But before we do that, we did want to give you a quick update on how things went at the farmer's market last week. It was the first week of us selling at our local farmer's market in Ava, Missouri. Uh, as you guys can see in the background here, we've got a lot of plants started. It ended up being about 3,200, 3,400 plants, something like that, that we have started. And you guys... Well, I'll let Sarah give you the update on the farmer's market. Well, the farmer's market, you know, we made the commitment to be out there. And uh, the day before and overnight, it was so, so windy. Uh, yeah. There was a chance there for a moment that we weren't going to go, even though we announced that we had been there and other vendors were uh, contemplating not going as well. Right. So we, we were having wind gusts 60 65 miles an hour wind gusts. Right. So the night before, we did pack the trailer full of all the trays that we had planned on taking. But that morning, we made a decision to only take a very small amount of our plants. We only took six trays of our plants to the farmer's market. We were able to sell all of them. We were able to right. meet many of you. Right. Thank you for everybody who showed up. Right. But we did have a very small amount that we took to the market. It ended up being a nice day. It was definitely windy the yeah, entire and cold. day. Yeah. It was pretty cold. It never really got out of the mid 40s and yeah. then with the wind it it was it, chilly it was chilly it, was it wasn't chilly. a real pleasant day but it was a fun day and it was a successful day at the market absolutely it was sunny which encouraged people to come out it was a good turnout right now we did want to remind you guys because there were some people who showed up were a little bit disappointed that we didn't have warm weather things along like tomatoes and peppers and some of those things and we want to remind you that we don't start bringing those things to the farmer's market for right. a couple more weeks. It's just too risky to be taking those and bringing them to the market too far ahead from when they can actually be planted in the ground. Mm -hmm. And why not let us continue to take care of them until the right time so that when you guys buy them and take them home, you can just take them home and get them right in the ground. The other thing that we wanted to let you know is that even though we have talked about that we have over 3,000 plants to sell at the farmer's market. We will not be taking all 3,000 of them. Every week. Every week. Uh, we'll take a certain amount that we can fit in the trailer. So because we are gonna be taking a limited amount each week, we do encourage you to come early because last year we did 
sell out sometimes before the end of the market day. Right. Now we've tried to start all of our plants kind of in succession. So we have some large tomatoes. Actually, a lot of those are for our own planting that we're going to be using mm -hmm. today. But then we have what we're calling the medium tomatoes and then we have small tomatoes. So don't worry. We do have plenty and we'll be bringing them, mm -hmm. you know, all along and everybody hopefully will get what they want. But just know that there is a chance if you don't show up early, you may not get exactly what you want that week. You might need to come back. Right. So before we get planting, just a reminder, we sell on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to noon at the Ava Farmer's Market in Ava, Missouri. We will be there until we are sold out of plants. That could be uh, through mid-May. Right. All right, today is working day here in the greenhouse. Let's go take a little walk around and show you what we've done so far, talk to you a little bit about the plan in here for this year, and then we're gonna get planting. All right, so uh, over the last few days, Sarah and I have been out here amending all of the buckets that we grow in. You can see everything has been topped off and ready for planting. Now, we amended these with 50% compost and 50% potting soil. Uh, no specific brand, just good quality potting soil is what you want to use so that there's plenty of good drainage in your buckets. Now we get a lot of questions about the tubs that we grow in. These are called Crystal Licks tubs. Basically what these are is when, or when they're new, they have a protein supplement in them for cattle. Over the winter you put them out, your cattle lick all the protein supplement out of them and then when they're empty, a lot of farmers will just either throw them away or burn them or send them off to the landfill. So we buy them. I mean, we use them for our cattle and we save our own empty ones, but then we also buy some from other local cattle farmers as well. And that's where we get these tubs. They're really heavy, sturdy, and they do a really good job. So if you're looking for those, sometimes you can find them on Craigslist or see if there's any cattle farmers in your area. They probably have some. All right. So, uh, this side of the greenhouse this year is going to be exciting. Uh, I'm going to kind of go over what we're going to be planting, but it's going to be really fast. These first buckets are basil, and then the entire rest of this row is tomatoes. This year we're doing 28 tomato plants in here. We're doing some cherry tomatoes, some slicing tomatoes, and some uh, paste tomatoes. So we'll go over the varieties as we start planting. But that is this entire half of the greenhouse this year is going to be tomatoes. Now this half is the equivalent of one full row out in our garden. So uh, normally we would plant two rows of tomatoes out in the garden, which is about 56 plants. So instead this year, one of the rows is in here and only one row is out there. So Kevin got the easy side to talk about. Mine's not so easy, so I, I have notes. He could memorize his. The majority of what we're going to be planting in this row are peppers. Now I will be planting two pepper plants per bucket. The first 20 buckets here will be all peppers. So that will be 40 pepper plants in this greenhouse. That's actually probably how many we plant in the, in the garden. So knowing that we may not plant peppers in the garden this year, we might just rely on what we plant here in the greenhouse. After the peppers, we're going to plant some green beans in here. We're only going to plant four buckets because we're just going to be using them for fresh eating. We are still going to have a lot planted out in the garden. So we will have uh, four buckets of green beans. We're going to have four buckets of cucumbers. And this year, we're not going to do a bush variety in the greenhouse. We're going to do a climber and we'll suspend a trellis for them to be able to grow up here. That'll be exciting. Kevin has a new variety of okra that he found. It's more like a, a bush type. It'll stay kind of smaller. Uh, he's excited to grow those in here. We're going to do four buckets of those. And then we're going to end up doing, I think, four or six buckets, depending on how much room we have back here, of uh, zucchini. Last year we planted zucchini and wasn't near enough. So this year we're going to expand, I think, to six buckets of zucchini. So that's the plan for this row. I am so excited to start getting planted in here and uh, just start to see this greenhouse come alive in the middle. We've had, you know, life on the sides here with the seedlings and now the middle is going to grow up as well. We've got all of our plants laid out in the buckets. I just want to go over the varieties with you guys real quick. 
These first two buckets are going to be Tom Berries. Now, if you remember, I'm doing an experiment this year where I wanted to try to grow the world's largest and the world's smallest tomatoes. These Tom Berries are supposed to be the world's smallest tomatoes. They actually can fit like 10 little tomatoes on a spoon. So they're going to be exciting to try. So they're up here at the front with the other cherry tomatoes. So we've got two Tom Berries. We've got uh, uh, three right here of the large red cherries, which is one of my favorite cherry tomatoes. And then the other side here is three of the Juliet tomatoes, my other favorite cherry tomato. Then after that, we have some paste tomatoes. We have the Amish paste and Salvaterra select. And then you guys, we get into the Jetstar. This is the tomato that we grow every single year. I don't think we will ever not grow it. Unless, of course, times get really hard and we can't get the seed because, unfortunately, the only downside to the Jetstar is that it is a hybrid and we need to buy seed every year. We can't save our own seed. But as long as we can get seed, we will always grow the Jetstar. So we're doing a lot of the Jetstars this year. They are going all the way up to here, the last two buckets. The last two buckets here uh, for tomatoes are going to be the Giant Domingo. This is supposed to be the world's largest tomato. Now, I don't plan on breaking any records, but I am excited to see how big they will get. And then we've got just a couple leftover buckets here. That's where Sarah's gonna be doing some zucchini. So let's get started planting these tomatoes. That's an exciting time. We're starting with the Tom Berry, like Kevin said. Uh, it is apparently the world's smallest tomato. I'm gonna start off by pinching off some of these um, leaves and these little um, suckers. There's actually some suckers on there already because I'm gonna be planting this plant relatively deeply as far as I can uh, dig down in this pot anyway, up until here or maybe up until here. We'll see how it goes. So I need to dig that hole here. And because we amended these and it has some really nice um, potting soil in there, it is really nice and uh, loose, fluffy soil. Now that seems to be the right depth there. The reason why I'm planting them so deep like that is that tomatoes will form roots all up their stem. So as far down as you plant them, the roots will grow and just make a, a more solid, healthy plant. If you're planting in the garden and can't go down like that really far, another trick you can do is you can plant your tomatoes like this in kind of a trench and all of these will become roots there too. And then this part will just start growing up toward the sun. So that's another trick if you wanna try that. So my hole is planted here down as deep as I would like it. I am going to put a nice big handful of dried rabbit manure down in there. And eh, let's put another handful in there. That'll give it some nice instant fertilizer down there. We're gonna remove this from the pot. Not too root bound, I'm pretty pleased about that. You can tickle the roots a little bit if you'd like to. Put the plant down in there and we'll just, we're just gonna backfill with the rest of that potting soil all the way up as far as the level of the soil. Stick the irrigation in there, put the label in there, the little tag so we remember what we planted there. And that is the first one done for today. We're just gonna move on and do the same thing with the rest of the tomatoes.
All right, you guys, how exciting. All of the tomato plants are in. Now, we will be praying that we don't get any extremely cold temperatures. But if we do, like we do have a few nights where the low is about 38. And sometimes it's a little bit cooler out here in the country than they say it's going to be in town. So uh, on those nights, um, we are going to put a floaty row cover over these, which will help keep them a little bit uh, protected. But I really don't think at this point we have too much danger. Even if it got, got below freezing for a couple hours, you know, in the middle of the night or in the early morning, uh, these tomatoes are big enough now that they should be able to handle a little bit. Now, in the greenhouse, it does stay a few degrees warmer than outside. And because of just the nature of having it covered and having the flow fans on, which we have off right now so that you guys can hear us, but otherwise these fans are on all the time, what that does is it keeps the humidity down and it keeps the dew from being able to settle on the plants. And that is usually what will then freeze and frost damage your plants. So I think we're going to be good here in the greenhouse. This year we are going to be using a just a single string trellis system again for the tomatoes just like we did last year. So we'll be showing you videos of that as we go along. But you guys, last year we had tomatoes all the way up to the top of the greenhouse. I actually had to use a ladder to get up and uh, pick some of the cherry tomatoes last year. So, I'm going to be a happy guy if that happens again. Alright, we're going to gather up our seeds and things that we need for the other half of the greenhouse, and then we're going to get started. Now that we have the tomatoes all planted, we are going to move on to planting everything that we need to plant from seed. Uh, we're actually hungry, want to go eat lunch, but we've said, you know what, no, let's plant all the seeds. They go quickly uh, and then we can go have lunch and then we'll come out and plant the rest of what we have today. Uh, so we are going to start off with our green beans. It's a bush green bean, uh, the contender bean. That's what we've always planted and loved. And um, we're going to plant four buckets total and five plants in each or five, you know, seeds in each one. Uh, I'm just going to make five holes here and plant our beans. I just am gonna put one bean per hole and about an inch down into the soil. And that's it. Planting seeds is so fast. Next up are cucumbers. We are planting the Market Moore 76 variety. We have been planting this in our garden for years and years and we really like it. Last year we tried a variety that was kind of more of a bush type. It climbed a little bit and you know what? We didn't really like it very much. So we're just gonna go back to the one that we know that we like. So in these buckets, I am going to grow two plants in each bucket, kind of one on the opposite side of the bucket of each other. Um, and I am going to put in uh, just a couple of seeds just to ensure germination. Probably about a half an inch down is probably how um, far down I'm putting those. And we are planting four buckets of those. So I will scooch over to this next bucket, plant these two seeds there, these two here, and just do the same for the other two buckets. So next up is our okra. Like Sarah said earlier, I found a variety of okra this year that's supposed to do really well in containers. It is called Baby Bubba Hybrid from Burpee Seeds. Now, out in the garden, I always love to plant the Clemson Spineless Okra, and I always just save my own seed for that. Um, I was afraid though that because the plants get so big, they wouldn't do well in the containers, which is why I found this variety. Now the downside to this variety is that it is a hybrid and I won't be able to save seeds. So in the past, you guys have always had good recommendations for uh, varieties to try. I'm gonna ask you now, do you know a variety of okra that stays fairly compact and smaller that would do well in containers but is not a hybrid because if you do I'd love to hear about it so that uh, maybe I can try those next year. All right so the okra we're going to plant two plants per container. It says to plant them every 12 inches and I'm going to put two seeds in each hole. Go down about an inch and cover them up. I love okra. I like to just eat it raw to be honest. I come out in the garden and I just 
eat it fresh out of the garden. It's also good steamed and of course everything's better fried, but I do like fresh okra. Last up for the seeds are zucchini and my favorite variety to grow is the Black Beauty. I'm gonna be doing six buckets in here. We actually have to fill this one yet. We ran out of the compost and the potting soil. So I'm gonna skip this one for today and I'll plant it tomorrow. So we will have four buckets on this side, two buckets on that side. I'm just going to be growing one plant per bucket because they get really big, the plants do. Uh, but I am gonna tr start two seeds in there uh, just to maximize the opportunity for germination. And I'll probably uh, cut one of them back the, the weakest of the, of the two. So I'm just gonna do that in every one of these buckets. And I hope that I have a plethora of zucchini this year. Last year, I felt like I needed more. Okay, back to work. We took a lunch break. It was fantastic, but now we can get back to work and finish this greenhouse. It's gonna be completely planted by the time we're done today. So the first thing we're gonna plant are some basil plants. Um, in the end, we'll have four, but we have an empty bucket. We need to fill that up. So we'll have four of Genevieve's basil right here in the front. And then we're going to move on to the rest of our peppers. Like I said before, we will have 40 pepper plants in here. In the front here, we're starting off with two separate kinds of peppers that we will use for snacking. The first one is called lipstick, and that will be bright red when it's fully ripe and ready to eat. And then we are planting natapenos. Now, natapenos are a jalapeno that are not spicy, and Kevin actually likes to eat these just kind of as a snack, which is why I kind of said they're in the snacking pepper section. After the snacking peppers, we have six buckets of bell peppers. Uh, we are growing two different varieties this year. One is Ozark Giant, which is a new variety we're trying, and so far we're totally impressed because the plants look beautiful, and we're gonna be growing some California Wonder. After that, we are gonna be growing two buckets of my favorite pepper, the Adjvarsky Red Roasting Pepper. Two buckets here. And then we're gonna do some uh, jalapenos, four buckets of jalapenos. This summer is going to be like salsa summer for me for canning. I haven't needed to can salsa in a couple of years because I made so much a couple of years ago. Well, this year I'm out. So I'm gonna be making a lot of salsa and so I need a lot of jalapenos. So that's why we have eight plants in four buckets. After that is uh, the sugar rush. Um, pepper. It's a smaller pepper that's pretty spicy. I'll probably incorporate that into salsas. Kevin really likes spicy peppers, so we're trying that for the first time this year. We've heard that they're kind of on the sweet side, but also spicy. And the last two buckets we're going to be growing are an ahi pepper called ahi arna arnaucho. <laughs> I probably said that terribly, uh, but that's new to us. We actually got the seeds from uh, one of the relatives of the original owners of our farm property, uh, brought it back from his wife's country, which I think is Peru. And uh, I guess so they're, they're a Peruvian type of pepper. And we decided to start those and maybe save seeds back so that they can kind of live on here on this property. So those are the peppers we're growing. We're going to get started planting and this greenhouse is going to be planted in no time. Before we start on the peppers, we're going to get this basil planted. This won't take just a couple minutes to get in with uh, basil. I mean, there's really no secret. You want to plant it about as deep as it was in the little pot that you got it in. You might be able to plant it just a little bit deeper, but you don't want to plant too deep. So we're just going to dig our hole. We're going to put a little Rabbit manure in the bottom, just like we did for the tomatoes. These are a little on the dry side right now, but that's okay. Well, everything will get a good drink when we're done planting for the day. Oh, I wish you guys could smell how good this basil smells. Now, we'll probably come back in a little bit with the scissors and cut off some of those bottom leaves so that they're not touching the soil, but that's all there is to planting basil. It's not difficult, and in no time, these plants are going to be huge. Basil is one of those plants that really, the hotter, the better. They love the heat. On to the peppers. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be doing two plants per pot. 
uh, probably in this spacing, which is probably about, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches apart. And uh, I am just going to plant them just like I did tomatoes where I dug a hole. Uh, you can plant peppers deep, kind of like tomatoes. Um, I'm not going to because these aren't really tall and spindly. Okay, first one's down. We just need to move on and plant the rest of these buckets of peppers. Well, I can't believe that we got the entire thing done, but the entire greenhouse is now planted and ready for this growing season. We cannot wait until we start picking those fresh tomatoes, those fresh peppers and right. green beans. Man, and I'm so excited about those tiny tomatoes and just to see how they do, I think they're gonna be so fun, but you know me, I'm excited about all the tomatoes. You guys, we're so glad that you joined us today as we planted our greenhouse. It was fun having you along. If you're enjoying our videos and content like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and to give us a thumbs up, we would appreciate it. Also remember that the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.